In this video, you will learn how to set up and use virtual Postgres in a fresh Next.js project. Of course, you can use this also for existing projects, but for this video, we will use a fresh project. So let's start by creating our project. Then let's open it up in VS Code. And next, we want to add this project to Vercel. And in order to do that, let's first add it to GitHub and then connect it from GitHub to Vercel. So I will go to GitHub and create a new repository like this and click Create. And then I will copy this code over here in order to add the remote for our project. And let's switch to the VS Code, open up the terminal, paste in the code like this. And now if we check GitHub, refresh our repository, we can see that the code is there. Great. Next, let's connect this project to Vercel. So I will open up vercel.com slash new. And I should see here my Vercel Postgres example project. So I will click import and I will also just deploy it. So now when I go to the dashboard, I can see my project over here. So let's click it open. So now we have our project in Vercel. So let's see how we can add the Postgres for this project. So I will actually open up a quick start guide for the Vercel Postgres. And if we scroll down a little bit, we can see that we need to add the Vercel Postgres package for our project. So I will copy that, switch to the VS Code and paste in the code and install the dependency like this. The next, let's see, we want to create a Postgres database. So let's go to our project in Vercel and we can see we have this storage tab over here. So let's click that open and I want to create new database and new Postgres database like this. Continue and accept and let's give it a name like this and I will select the region and click create and continue. And here we can select which environments we want to make this database available for and I will want to have them for all. So let's click connect like this. Okay, so now we should have the Postgres database connected to our project. And we can see if this worked by going to the settings of the project. And over here we have the environment variables and we should see here some environment variables related to the Postgres. And you can see right here that they were added automatically in here. So that's great. So our project should be now connected. So let me click back to the storage and open up the database. So if we check the quick start guide again, so we have created the database, then we reviewed what, what was created. So we saw that we had the environment variables there. So next we need to prepare our local project. So in order for our local project to know where to connect when it tries to connect to Postgres, we need to add the environment variables that we just saw to our local project. And one way to do this is by using the virtual CLI tool, but I'm actually gonna do it a bit differently. So I'll go back to the project and the storage tab and I have the Postgres database open. And down here I can see the .env.local file. So here are all the environment variables that we need. And I'm gonna click copy snippet and switch back to the VS code and create a local environment variable file like this and open it up and then just paste in the variables that we just copied like this. So using the CLI tool like this would do the exact same thing, but I just like to do it like this. So let's save this and we can close that file. And next, uh, let's see the quick start guide. So let's populate some data to our database and then cure it. So let's try to add this code snippet. Let's copy it to our API route and see if we can get it working. So I copied that code snippet, switch back to the VS code, and let's just open the uh, hello API route over here. And as you can see, I used the pages folder for this example. You could use the app directory also, that works too. But for this example, I just decided to use the pages folder. But yeah, let's remove everything for, from this API route and paste in our code snippet. So let's save it and see what's going on in here. So 
we are first importing DP from the virtual Postgres dependency that we installed earlier. Then we need to get a database client and we can do it with the DP connect. And then we try to create a table and then insert some data into it. So we can use the client.sql to write some raw SQL queries. And then after that, we are going to query that data that we just inserted in here and then just return that data. So let's try this out. I'm saving it and then firing up the dev server and let's just see what happens. So I'll open up the localhost 3000 and this is the front page. And now let's try to hit that API route. Okay, we get something, not quite what I expected, but let's see. So it looks like we are getting a bit more than we might want. So we get all this other metadata, but over here we have the rows and we can see that we have the uh, one row that we inserted in there. So it looks like the data went in and we were also able to query it, but let's actually see what happens if we refresh this page. So we get a really clear error, as you can see. And I think this comes because if we check out the SQL again, we are always, when hitting this API route, we are running this uh, SQL query. So we are creating that new table every time. So since that was the second time we run this, uh, the table already existed and we couldn't create it. So what I'm gonna do is just add a few words in here, like this. So plain SQL, we are creating the table if it doesn't exist already. Let's save this and see how it works now. So I'll open the API route, refresh the page, and we again get the result. And now we have two rows in here, both with same data. And that's because we are running this insert every time we are hitting this API route. But yeah, that's fine for now. But one thing I want to do is just clean this output a little bit. So let's just return the rows for this API route. So in here, instead of returning the pets, I will just return pets.rows like this. Save it and refresh the page. And looks like we are just getting the rows now. So that's much cleaner. So that's a super simple example on how to get started using the virtual Postgres with your Next.js application. If you are looking for some lighter solution than Postgres, for example, some key value store for your application, Virtual also has the Virtual KV, which is the Virtual's key value database. So if you want to learn how to set up and use that in your Next.js project, watch this video over here next.